Hi there, I am Zoe from DICE and today we're going to talk about U.S. slavery and how it connects to what we think and know about race today. We often look at this period of time in U.S. history as out of character by saying that our ancestors were less aware or simply a product of their time. And we dismiss the atrocities that occurred during slavery and we think that all of its impacts were magically erased by the 13th Amendment. However, slavery it was not a fluke in our country's history. It was the product of our economic system and a national mindset of profit over people. Let's start at the very beginning. As the colonies were growing in their economic wealth, tobacco was quickly becoming a cash crop and it required a lot of labor to cultivate. At the time, most labor was in the form of indentured servitude, meaning that the person who was its servant would sign a contract where they would work for a temporary amount of time in exchange for freedom and sometimes land at the end of their servitude. The length and severity of indentured servitude contracts varied, and many poor Englishmen would exchange this labor for passage to the Americas. In 1619, a Dutch ship arrived with the first African slaves to come to the Americas. They were sold in exchange for food for their voyage. However, because all of these African slaves had been baptized Christian, it was against English law to enslave them. Thus, these Africans also became indentured servants, meaning that once they had completed the labor in their contract, they were able to acquire land and laborers, some of whom were white. This lack of racial hierarchy, though, didn't last forever. In 1640, three indentured servants ran away from their plantation in order to escape to Maryland. They were shortly thereafter captured and returned where they were punished for breaking their contracts. The two white indentured servants had time added to their servitude contracts, while the one black servant by the name of John Punch was sentenced to be a servant for the rest of his life. This makes John Punch the first official slave in the Americas. Servitude is temporary, slavery is lifelong. Colonists then saw the benefit of having a clear distinction between free and enslaved persons and the value of making that a lifelong condition. This spurred many colonies to recognize slavery as a legal institution, regardless of whether or not you were Christian. Soon after, slavery also became a hereditary status, meaning that a parent would pass along their enslaved status to their children. This idea was challenged and shaped by the case of Elizabeth Key Grinstead. Grinstead had an English father and an enslaved African mother and sued for her citizenship because at the time, it was traditional to inherit one's status from your father. This case led to many states changing that tradition so that you would inherit your status instead from your mother. Inheriting your status from your father or from your mother is an important distinction to make because we have to recognize the specific plight of enslaved black women in the American colonies who were often forced to bear children of their white enslavers. Thus, given gender dynamics and power balances at the time, it was much easier to keep African enslaved people in perpetual slavery that was hereditary and lifelong. This style of slavery is referred to as chattel slavery, and I want to reiterate, this was again not typical anywhere else in the world at the time. This new institution of slavery birthed a racial hierarchy, which was further enforced by laws that would separate lower income white people from enslaved Africans, which then further emphasized the difference even though their economic differences were not significant. So how does this all tie to race science? Well, race science as a concept is what allowed us to justify our inhumane treatment of Black and Indigenous people in this country. When we legitimize systemic racism by classifying Black and Indigenous people as inhuman, it's much easier to justify us treating them as though they are less than human. This societal classification of Black and Indigenous people as being less human subsequently led to the severe and unique lack of humanity in our institution of slavery here in the U.S. So let's tie this back to the quote that we open with from ta Coates, that race is the son of racism, not the father. 
As we can see in the case of John Punch, race was not a concept. However, racism was very much at play because we disproportionately punished the one African servant while not punishing the two white servants in the same way. We can also see though that race is a mechanism by which we are able to justify our treatment in our economic system. Racism existed before the concept of race. And we then created race science to continue to justify our treatment of enslaved Black people in this country. And that use of race science to justify inhumane treatment is something that we continue to see to this day.